in another 23, 24 days. Um, so we're going to go over some key goals, some plans by site for 2016. And then we're going to look at the radiological program, and then I have a slide again at what our community outreach is envisioned to be in 2016, which looks a lot like 2015. But again, it's going to be some commitments to you about what we're going to do. Um, okay. Dave? So 2016 key goals, and you see we have a lot of them. It's going to be a very busy year. Uh, so you see, as we talked about, all those sites where we did the radiological scanning. So we're going to have what we call, again, the final status survey reports. That's a technical term that we use to denote something after you've done, done the radiological scanning. That's what we send to the regulators so that they can give us what we call free release, radiological free release. And so we have several sites that we want to obtain this free release for. There will be individual reports on that. You can see them in the document tracking sheet or the site management plan. So site 6, 31, and then 32, site 32, which is up here, we've uh, split that just into two sections uh, just for our convenience. Uh, we're using that area for Chris's project for some of those radiological screening pads. So we just have to split it up for convenience, but both of those sites will be uh, achieving free release in 2016. So again, site 32B, that's what we mean, and that's really, it will all be one site at, at the end of the day. For site 12, again, various, various documents for, for site 12, um, one can say the majority of the work will be there. So you'll have post-construction summary reports. Every time we do some sort of phase of field work, we have usually a post-construction summary report or as part of the remedial action or remedial action completion report. In this case, you'll have a post-construction summary report coming out for a phase of, of Chris's work. And then for the next phase, there will be what we're calling the proposed plan for Site 12. Now this is going to be not a rad, and it doesn't include Chris's areas, and we'll get into a little bit of detail in further meetings on that. But if you look at the site management plan, you'll see a flow chart that, that hopefully makes it all clear exactly the steps that we're going to take for Site 12. But again, this proposed plan will be for non-radiological chemicals, and it will not include Chris's solid waste disposal areas. So it's sort of a layered approach when it comes to Site 12. Now, as, as Keith mentioned, there will be a community meeting in April 2016, so that's really the, the place where we'll go into great detail to help hopefully clarify exactly what we're doing uh, for this phase of work. According to, uh, to CERCLA, we, of course, uh, have a proposed plan followed by the record of decision. It's the Navy's official document to memorialize uh, what we're actually going to do for the site, and this is, again, going to be for Site 12. Um, at Gateview area, again, that's right in this area, now, Gateview's a long, long street, so I'll point to this general location where uh, Bryce Bartelma, you may have recalled, giving some uh, discussion regarding the petroleum arsenic area in that, in that particular area. Well, he will be doing an excavation uh, due to a groundwater issue. And so he'll be doing that here, he'll be doing that work followed with a report in uh, 2016 as well. Um, solid waste disposal area cleanup on uh, North Point, Bay Side, and West Side. Uh, this is Chris's. Uh, Big job in 2016 is to finish the work up, and um, we're hoping we can do that. Uh, so 2016 starts in a few weeks, and so we'll have an entire year to try and finish up that work. And I think we can do it. We're, we're very confident that we're we're getting to the bottom of that. Site 32 uh, record decision. We will sign uh, the, the. It'll be actually a no further action record decision. Uh, some of the uh, RAD members may recall a excavation for PCBs, uh, polychlorinated bifinals, uh, in years past. And so this document will basically uh, memorialize the fact that we do not need to take further action at the site. The reason it was delayed is uh, years ago someone said, well, you have the pandemonium there. Take a look at the, the radiological aspect of Site 32. We've gone and done that, which will now allow us to go ahead with the record of decision. And uh, last but not least, we continue to, to investigate um, what we call YF3, uh, Yanga Foxtrap 3, on Yerba Buena Island. Um, this is one of several petroleum sites 
on Uruguay Island that uh, we have. This is one of the only ones left. And so we're going to continue to investigate it, mainly for ecological issues. So we'll do what's called a baseline ecological risk assessment after we collect more information in coordination with the water board. Right, and so we've been working very closely, as near as I can tell you, with her, with, with her and the board on this site, and to uh, one of our RAP members, Dale Smith's, uh, I believe, um, satisfaction. We are going to move forward on, on YF3, and in fact, complete a full-blown baseline ecological risk assessment after we put out a work plan for the data gaps to, to do um, some data, uh, data gathering and then some uh, analysis on that. We're working very closely with, with the water board on that. In fact, they sent us a letter, a very detailed letter. And so we will make progress on that. And I just wanted to point out that uh, Mukesh Mehta, that, that I introduced you to in the meeting, that is his project, one of his major, major focuses that he's been working on. And you'll hear more about that in 2016. We will most probably have a presentation on YL3. Okay, very good, next. So we 